India's market news headquarters. Cutting edge analysis. Influential insights. Market moving intelligence. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswald Studios in Mumbai. Well, those are pictures of uh, the victory parade here in Mumbai. And uh, I mean, I think there was only one thing anyone and everyone could talk about, and maybe rightly so, uh, the winners of the World Cup uh, in Delhi, then in Mumbai. And of course, uh, event procession, mobbed by fans, really culminating at the Vankade Stadium. Uh, so, I mean, really uh, a bright morning after all of the celebratory events that happened uh, yesterday here. Uh, this is, of course, uh, Bazaar. I'm Prashant. With me, my colleague Sonia and Nigel. Guys, hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Nigel. And morning. It, it was like hysteria had gripped the city, right? Yesterday, to see the spirit of Mumbai coming out, supporting their team. And uh, there was one point when they were not letting the bus move, yeah. but they were letting the ambulances mm. pass. So, you know, that's that just goes to show the spirit of Mumbai. And it was really phenomenal to see. Well, that's right. And we have seen, you know, the men in blue with the ball in the bat. Yesterday, they put on their dancing shoes. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was, they were in party mode. You know, the dhol, the steps, Virat, uh, uh, yeah, Rohit Sharma, Rohit you know, I saw Surya Kumar Yadav. They, they were turning on the style yesterday in terms of their clouds, dance steps I mean, as well. Yeah. Fantastic. Just take a look at that. I mean... What an atmosphere, champions on the screen and, um, you know, nothing better than this. And, you know, I just want to make one mention. So, there was an image of Hardik Pandya on the field, uh, you know, in the pitch, right, with the uh, trophy. Mm. I remember I'd gone to see one Mumbai Indians match mm. when Hardik Pandya w entered and he was booed really badly. They were chanting his name uh, yesterday. No, he, he, yeah, yesterday they were chanting, chanting his name, but and on that match, he was booed so badly. Yeah. So, somebody wrote, right, from being booed to mm. bowed. And it was really phenomenal to see the turnaround and the kind of support that the team You know, I, I still believe that one ball from uh, Hardik Pandya, I mean, changed the course. <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course, Bumrah then followed through with a couple of wickets. But that one ball, I think, really was uh, critical. Yeah, and, and credit to the man, you know, because he was under a lot of pressure uh, for the last few months. But he maintained his silence and he chose to speak only with the ball and with the bat. You know, so kudos to him. These are champion players and, uh, you know, our boys did us proud. Absolutely. Well, uh, you know, let's uh, then move along and uh, take a look at what uh, the market is going to do, right? I mean, with the bat and the ball, uh, it's uh, every day is a T20 match nowadays. It's for the market as well because, I mean, you open and, uh, you know, <clears throat> quick 20 overs, uh, quick couple of hours, the market more than more often than not moves higher and uh, it's been that kind of a, a session. So, let's just uh, begin by telling you what you need to know. You've got a very quiet uh, global backdrop and that's, uh, you know, largely because the U.S. was out of action. You had the Independence Day holiday in the U.S., uh, so no U.S. And so you look at other global indices, markets kind of flatline because there's also another important data point later today. Politics will be center stage. So you have U.K. election results, the exit polls, which have been streaming through for the last many hours. And it looks like uh, the Conservative Party is out. Labour is in with full form. But you know, the point is, this was largely expected. It's a, it's a complete sweep uh, in that sense, but it's in line with expectations. You're not seeing a big reaction in UK assets. Look at the uh, GBP or the uh, futures there. Now, the second round of French elections will happen over the weekend. I think they're on Sunday. And uh, there is a, I mean, a lot of politics, really. Uh, there is politics out of the US as well, right? So the post-debate, the debate between President uh, Biden and ex-president Trump, which took place, and, you know, many said, well, Biden flopped. Uh, but he's been trying to appease the Democratic constituency because there have been lots of news reports, articles, whether Biden will need to step aside, uh, Kamala Harris will need to step in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But he's doing his best to appease those concerns. He's appearing on a television interview over the weekend as well on the ABC news channel. So we'll see uh, what all of that uh, really does. Because, you know, whatever happens to the Democratic candidate will have implications for the race itself because, you know, the incumbent usually always does have a lead. 
uh, when you're fighting an election as compared to somebody new or somebody on the other side. Now, uh, you have uh, an, the important data point later today, the jobs, U.S. jobs data. Remember, the commentary from Fed officials, Fed, uh, Fed Chair Powell himself, very recently, a few days ago, is very positive in the sense that they're saying that Q1 saw lots of data surprises, but now in the second half, we are exp expecting disinflationary uh, tendencies to pick up. I mean, data to show disinflation. The consensus for this month's number is 190,000 uh, jobs being added, and uh, September rate cut pricing could increase uh, on a weak job spread. The question, though, is you want a weak number, but not very weak. So a slightly weaker jobs data will be positive for stocks, risky assets, basically. Well, a very weak number will be actually negative for stocks as well, which will show that the real economy is starting to really dramatically slow down uh, and the uh, rate cuts are nowhere in sight. That's going to be negative. So you want weak, but not really very, very weak. So about 120, 125,000 should be uh, should be good. But below that, I mean, I think you're looking at, uh, you know, the market may be reacting in a negative way. So that's the big one later today. Uh, the Just to circle back to levels, I mean, they don't change. I mean, the numbers change because we're looking at, uh, you know, what happened yesterday. For example, the Nifty opened with a uh, open higher, went up and then lost about 100 points from the day's high. We closed 100 points from the day's high. So, uh, you know, resistance still remains the daily upper Bollinger Band, which is at 24,427. Basically, it's almost, it coincides with yesterday's high nearly. Ultimately, Nifty should get to, in the coming days and weeks, should get to its higher equality level of 24,900. And support for the Nifty comes in at the 40 hourly, which is 24,142. That's the nearest level, 150 points away from yesterday's close. And then, uh, and then below that, you're looking at 24,056 for the Nifty. Immediate target for the Nifty Bank is 53,970. So many banking updates, right? I mean, right from, of course, the big boy HDFC Bank. I'm talking about business updates for the first quarter. Uh, and uh, many others, which we will ha which will have implication. We'll talk about this. Uh, the upper that's the upper Bullinger band, 53.970. On the way down, the 40 hourly is 52.691, which should act as a bit of a support level. It's about a percent and a half odd away from where we left off yesterday. Gift Nifty should come up on your screen. It's indicating a flattish to slightly lower start. Sonia. Well, absolutely. I think just consolidating, right, around record highs. And that's not just such a bad thing, yeah. given that we've had the kind of momentum in the last many days. So Nifty holding strong at the 24,300 mark. And there are plenty of things to watch out for as we begin a brand new day of trade and the last trading day of the week. Um, if you look at the U.S. markets, of course, they were shut. But now most, most of the U.S. markets closed at record highs on Wednesday. And now the jobs data is due today. So that's going to be something that the street will keep on their radar. For our own markets, FIs continue to buy in large quantities. So FIs bought almost 2,600 crores in the cash markets yesterday. And although there was a little bit of selling uh, by the IIs yesterday. Now, financials will be in focus. Lots of stocks have come out with their business updates, whether it's HDFC Bank, RBL Bank, Yuko Bank have all released their business updates. I'm also watching out for three other companies that just came out with their updates right now. There's Angel One, where the business update looked pretty good for, uh, you know, the quarter gone by. There's Kalyan Jewelers, and you'll get a sense of, you know, consumer demand as well. And Macrotech just came out with their business update as well. So these are a couple of stocks uh, that we're going to look at this morning. So lots to track. But largely, I think this continues to be a buy on dips market, continues to cruise at record high levels, building onto its gains, large buying coming in from FII's. So no problems at the moment, but last trading day of the week and lots of uh, global data to look forward to. So let's see which way it goes. Well, that's right. I think uh, some kind of consolidation with a bit of a positive bias will not hurt anyone. You know, in yesterday's trading session, you saw the FIs, they went ahead and they added long positions yet again. So close to around 15,000 contracts is what they added in uh, yesterday's trade as well. That's close to around seven long contracts for every one short position. And in fact, the long contracts now move up to around 84% and they're holding at those levels. If you pull up a chart to see Week to date, how uh, you know the FI positions have moved, the long addition has continued. So just take a look at that. They were at around three and a half lakh contracts. Now they're closer to around four lakh contracts. Odd. So all through this week, there's been steady long addition. And the clients, they have been short and they're steadily increasing their short positions as well. So the short contracts from around 2.6 lakh contracts, they're nearly at around three lakh contracts. Both of them on upper end of opposite ends of the spectrum on index futures, but on stock futures, both of them are net long. So it's going to be a stock specific market from year on as well. The options data, I'm pulling up two strikes because that's giving me the broad range in terms of uh, the near term, that 400 point range chart. So 24,500 uh, call, well, that's seen a fair bit of addition. Premium were there at around 50 rupees. And on the put side, you have the 24,200 uh, put as well, that is fairly active, which brings us to the levels going by the options data. 
On the upside, the 24,550-odd, that will be a bit of a resistance zone because of the writing we've seen at around 24,500. On the downside, since we're seeing writing at around 24,200 put, and that's been continuous, so that's why 24,100. So in the near term, this is the broad range that I'm looking at. So we'll have to keep an eye out on that front. The stock in focus is going to be HDFC Bank. Remember when that MSCI rejig news came out, which is going to take place in the month of August, the street was positioned for, you know, on the long side. Now, in the last two sessions, we have seen that the stock has corrected closer on 4%. And you have the business update, which is looking a little bit somber. So the stock pulls back a little bit to kickstart trade. Let's see whether or not there's some buying interest, because yesterday the stock ended virtually at the low point of the day. So the street this time around is positioned for some kind of disappointment. There was some seller news that took place, 4% in two trading sessions. That's going to be the big move on today's trading session. If it can recover, then it'll help the Nifty. If, in fact, it sells a little bit, it'll continue to remain a bit of a drag. Okay, thanks a lot, Nigel, for that. So plenty of things to look forward to as we begin a brand new day of trade. But let's kick start by giving you some equity views coming in. Rupal Bhansali of Bernstein says that there is no valuation comfort in India PSU trade as the segment is trading at record valuations of 14 times forward PE and 2.7 times price to book, which is the highest multiple seen since 2005. She says even relative to broader markets, uh, i.e. the BSE 500 PSU index, breached an all-time high valuation in April. And since then, it has been on a valuation down cycle. However, she adds relative to non-PSU, there is still some valuation advantage. And given better fundamentals and consensus not at record bullishness, as for non-PSU, some PSU names could continue to do well. However, she says within the basket, we are most concerned about industrials and financial PSUs as these sectors are trading at all-time high valuations. <clears throat> okay, so money market views here. This is Lakshman and V of Federal Bank who says that the US uh, dollar index retreated to a three-week low to, uh, of 105 levels. Amid softer employment figures, he says FOMC minutes showed signs of disinflation and cooling labor market, thereby increasing hopes of a Fed rate cut in September. He adds the yen saw sharp de uh, decline to near 162 levels due to policy divergence and the euro and the pound gained during the week due to a falling dollar. He says the USDI now traded in a narrow range and expects the pair to trade between 83.3 to 83.7 in the coming sessions. Okay, and on the bonds, Lakshmanan says the Indian government bond yields steady amidst lack of cues. He says the US yields eased after weaker economic data, bolstered bets of rate cuts. He adds the market awaits inflation prints for India and the US due next week. And he says the coming sessions could see the 10-year benchmark bond yield trade in a range of 6.95 to 7.05%. Well, we've got plenty of stocks to track for you. Let's uh, highlight our, the, all the stocks we'll be covering in our top 10 segment. We're looking at Punjab National Bank, RPL Bank, Punawala Fincorp, Mahindra Life Spaces, Macrotech Developers and Kalyan Jewelers. All of them will, will be reacting to positive news flow. On the flip side, HDFC Bank, Lloyd Metals, Ujivan, SFB and ISAB. Uh, SFB, all of them will be reacting to negative news flow.